Gorilla Geek going 10-8. Gorilla Geek going 10-8. What's up, people? In this episode, we're finally going to configure both the radio for, to put into service. So we're going to start with the radio first. And uh, on the last couple of episodes, it, I took a lot of time just to explain how to interconnect the cable here to work with these two radios, the TYT and the Wuxon here. Uh, but we needed to do that first before we could uh, get to this step that we're in right now. Because uh, some of you guys know that uh, they have software for this radio and this, way, this radio, and you could program it uh, with the use of a PC. But this device here does not. Uh, you have to program it through your uh, faceplate here. These are DTMF tones. And it's going to repeat. See, those tones is what is used to program the simplex repeater. It does not take a computer interface or anything like that. It's totally manual through the radio. So you understand why we need to square away the cable first before we go any further into configuring this box. But straight off from the factory, uh, it's ready to go into uh, repeater mode. So it's not critical, but you know, it's you'll see why I want to do the changes that I want to do to this particular uh, device along with the radio here so so let's get into it we're going to program the TYT radio or any similar radio uh, to work as a repeater up on a remote site or whatever and I'm going to do it differently uh, true to the name of Gorilla Geek is going to be Gorilla Comms, Gorilla Tactics I'm not going to follow conventional form and that's the whole idea of my personal build for, for my family. I don't want other people to get access to this. So I'm going to put on layers of security. Uh, it's going to be security by ignorance. So since I'm using or I'm going to be using GMRS to frequency to work with this system here, I've picked the ham channel uh, UHF band uh, to replicate what I'm trying to do with the real final product when I go to, in deployment. So within the UHF ham band here in, in the Northern California there's somewhat of a gentleman agreement of a band plan. And what a band plan is is uh, allotment of the frequency that, that's allowable to hams to operate in and they're separated with between single sideband, uh, experimental, uh, TV if you want to do slow scan TV, uh, repeater inputs, repeater outputs, uh, simplex communications and also calling frequencies. Those are all chunks of frequencies or single frequencies that are is already allotted for a specific uh, task. So I'm sort of going to follow that so I wouldn't interfere with anybody else and since my rig here is experimental I'm going to choose an experimental frequencies for me to use in the ham band, but it's still UHF and it's close enough to the GMRS frequency, which is UHF as well, for me to replicate what I wanted to, to, to do. So the experimental band here in Northern California and other parts of the states, it may be a little bit different, I don't know. But here specifically, uh, it's from 432 megahertz to 438 megahertz. Between those two numbers is the experimental frequency range that I'm allowed to, you know, experiment. Uh, ham radio is is originally all about experimenting and, and making radios better and, and inventing and stuff like that. Now I'm only going to program one channel only. Uh, later on, maybe I'll have maybe an alternate, uh, a, a few alternates, maybe a, a group of five frequencies uh, when I'm all said and done. And I'm doing that just in case one frequency gets compromised, I could go ahead, flip the channel real quick and go into alternate channel number two with the same sort of format as my primary channel. And that's more of an operational thing and how you want to run it. But for now, I'm just going to program just one single channel. 
and this is the format that I'm going to take like I said it's uh, UHF and it's going to be GMRS but I'm replicating it with uh, UHF hand frequencies so for my HT to have access to my portable repeater I have to transmit 435.52 megahertz and then when that repeat when that radio receives this is going to whip it on out and transmit on another frequency and that would be 432.725 and if you notice if anybody's paying close attention that split that frequency split usually in UHF it's norm the normal that you'll see is 5 megahertz apart from frequencies so uh, if I'm transmitting 532 this should be transmitting 537 but like I said Gorilla comms I'm going against the norm so that offset frequency for me would be 2.795 that's a layer of security for me some of these ham radios they automatically do the split for you uh, the 5 megahertz offset frequency so to counteract that I just pick another dopey frequency and 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 have this screwy uh, offset frequency so that's to counteract that now so that takes care of the frequency selection here now for access to to the repeater to where only your radio is going to have access actually there's a bunch of radios that can have access to your radio but this is another layer of security by ignorance. On the repeater radio, if you notice here, the decode, coded squelch decode is D226I. In conventional radios, or what people are most likely to recognize and, and know of, is tone squelch, where the, which means that the radio has to transmit a, t a sub audible tone to open up the receiver of your radio this is to eliminate uh, interference and to sort of kind of have a separation from other radios that, that may be nearby so you won't have to either step on them or they step on you uh, the, the GMRS bubble pack people call it privacy tones they're really not privacy tones it's just an annoyance filtering system but that tone usually is what is used to access repeaters and to access radios that have the same tone so they can all talk on the same page and normally what they will use and it is in an analog tone in this case the repeater is going to encode transmit out to the to the field 127 hertz dot three 123 dot 127 dot hertz in analog tone but for me to access the repeater so I could use the repeater my radio um, in my pocket would have to transmit a digital tone so that's what the D stands for 226 is the, the, the code or the designator of that particular digital uh, data going up to the repeater and then I, you will see either an I or an N. N for normal, I for inverted. So instead of the peaks going up, 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 which is normal, when you look at the, at the digital data, I said to have it in inverted. So the peaks will be going down, 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 down. That's another layer of ignorance. So I'm totally going to left field with the decode here because not many agencies or people use the digital squelch or digital privacy tones or coded squelch. In this case, I'm going to use it because of that fact. So it's going to take people two, three, four times longer to try to decipher the decode of, of, my, per, uh, of my repeater. And the one thing that's number that that is important about my decision to do this is in the GMRS and FRS radio service 
digital communication is not allowed. Uh, so it has to be toned, but in my case, I'm going to go ahead, but I'm going to use it anyway because of the security feature, because just having this alone will eliminate almost 99% of all bubble pack radios out there. There's no way those little walkie-talkies could have access to my repeater because they don't have this digital capability. It's not built into the radio. Part 90 radios you can and amateur radios you can. That's why here in my experimental uh, frequency I could do that. And the radios that I'm using is capable of doing that. So that is the only sort of caveat or, or something that's not totally going with the rules that I'm going to be using. But like I said, this is going to be for emergency purposes only. And if there's an emergency, who's got the time to try to decipher my code? I'm going to get on and get off real quick, including the family. They're going to get on, make a message, and get off. Then here and some of the other things that I wanted was uh, transmitting high power, which is going to be either between 4 to 5 watts. The scan, I'm going to have it deleted. And it's not going to use scan. I want to use wide... I want to use wide band uh, channel, not narrow band wideband because uh, it's been found out that that narrowband that the part 90 radios have to have to convert to they lose a little bit of range so it's best to get as much range as I can get and I'm going to leave it in wideband uh, busy channel lock I got the to off and everything else is off and those are the controls that I can control with the software here there's other specs that I need to do that I have to do manually through the uh, manual programming on the faceplate of the radio itself. Now this is the setup for the radio up on a hill hooked up to the repeater. On your vehicle radio or your handhelds, this configuration is going to be flopped. So you're going to be transmitting 435.520 or whatever you decided and you're going to be transmitting this digital uh, data to, to have access to your radio if you choose to do it my way this is just what I'm going to do then your radio is going to be receiving 432.725 and you could leave it either open carrier squelch or have it tone protected I chose to have it open carrier because if I hear somebody on another ch on the same channel speaking close to me I'm gonna not talk so so as to uh, n not have them hear my traffic or, or give my location away and stuff at home I'm gonna have sort of a bat phone configuration and I'm gonna have it tone protected at home because I don't want people inadvertently go to that channel at 2 in the morning and have my radios go off and waking us all up so that's gonna be a uh, for that reason alone. Now the, these are other specifications that I need to program into the repeater radio here uh, that I have no access to by the uh, software. This is a manual thing I have to do to this to, to make it work. Uh, it's kind of half half ass backwards. Everything should be done by the software but uh, what, what, do you, what do you expect for a uh, $90 radio? But anyway and this is the uh, specifications. Squelch I'm going to set to 5. TOT is timeout timer and I placed it on 60 seconds and what that does is if if you yak more than 60 seconds or or it get the transmitter stays on for more than 60 seconds it's going to stop transmitting. That's going to save your battery. That's going to save other people from fox hunting your your repeater down and and finding it and all it's going to avoid a whole lot of problems this is highly recommended put a time limit on on the time you're going to transmit your radio in my case is uh, actually I, I would like to do it 30 seconds but we're going to be leaving messages and the messages are going to i'm going to have it d be done in 55 seconds and then the transmit itself is going to be 60 seconds uh, that's the limit per message but that's just to save battery and of course uh, so so if it ever gets stuck 
and people are tracking it they can't find it I mean you would know because hopefully you would do checks every other day to see if it's still working or not but anyway uh, this radio has a thing called battery saver and what that is is it, it cycles the receive circuits on and off on and off really 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 fast and that's just to save power you're 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 working that receiver uh, only 75 percent of the time I'm gonna have that disabled to off because I want my receiver to be on and listening at all times I think my solar panels and my batteries are, are gonna handle that extra load that that I may be having it do and I think this is more important than to have it to save if, if you had it as a handheld on your side then yeah I can see that that would make your batteries last longer but this is more critical for me up on the hilltop uh, beeps I want it off I don't want this thing making any noise then you have a Roger beep and that is when the radio after it gets done transmitting it transmits a beep to let you know that I'm done transmitting and, and that's more like a ham thing they like that so much but public safety the, the 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 armed services they don't have roger beeps and roger beeps i think it's more of a dog whistle i mean if you if you're just scanning the frequencies and you hear a beep you know that's traffic you want to stop to it and listen it kind of gets your attention where normal talking and stuff like that is less of a chance for your ear to kind of hone in on that so i want all roger beeps to be off d weight dual weight uh, I think I don't know exactly what that is on that radio so if I don't understand what that is and it doesn't explain what it is it's gonna be off APRO is also off I think that's automatic power radio off maybe uh, on the Alenco that's what that is and it, after a certain amount of time the radio will turn off by itself if it doesn't have any activity no I want that to be off because uh, it's gonna be on the radio is gonna be on all the time busy channel lock BCL if the channel is busy you can't transmit on it until the mess until the message uh, until it stops receiving and then you can use the transmitter or the radio it doesn't really matter in this configuration because uh, after the guy gets done talking into it it's gonna wait and then repeat it out and and so it's kind of a mute point on this but overall I like it to have it off uh, just in case Vox is going to be off. Dual weight, as you can see, this has two channel, two channel slots here, uh, the the primary and the secondary. And that dual watch, what it'll do is it'll scan both of them. So I may have my my repeater channel GG on top, and channel and the bottom frequency there could be something else, and it'll go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, sometimes you might talk into this and it'll be scanning on channel number two and I don't want that to happen so for me dual watch will be off receiver save I think that's the same thing as battery saver I don't know what the difference of the two are but I have it off voice will be off that's that voice when you press a button the the the, the lady on on the on inside the freaking radio will go channel one channel two you know the, so as a summary, even though this is a simplex repeater and you could use just one frequency for transmit and receive in this setup, I'm going to use a repeater pair or quasi-repeater pair, two different frequencies to, to do that, uh, just so it would throw people off. It, it's all about throwing people off if they're listening. Uh, that's why I got this weird, weirdo offset frequency. I'm going, I'm thinking out of the box here same thing with the uh, having access to the repeater like I said almost 99 percent of all the bubble pack radios do not have digital uh, coded squelch capabilities and then on top of that instead of going normal I, I went inverted as well so that's kind of that's two different sort of uh, settings for the same number so that would knock out I would say 85% of the knuckleheads out there, if they're persistent in having access to my portable repeater, hams and maybe radio geeks like myself, 
they are capable and but by that time I would know if somebody's snooping around and I'm gonna change frequency or stop operations altogether. So that's pretty much the radio setup here and quick and dirty and hopefully not too boring. So in that example that I just showed you I'm using a ham channel and everything that I've done to that particular setup is 100% legal if you have a ham license. Now in my GMRS setup that's going to be 100% legal except for the digital coated squelch. The emission designator for G the GMRS service does not allow digital communications uh, and even though your voice is analog being used on this and, and in this case it is being used in analog mode, the voice the subtone or the the coded message that you can't hear to have the receiver of this thing open is digital and I think that's not allowed I'm, I'm not too sure uh, I really don't read too much into it but like I said for emergency purposes only it's gonna be digitally coded squelch so uh, read the FCC rules find out for yourself for your setup but that's how I'm running things but let's say that I take out that requirement of mine of having the access to this to be digitally encoded and I chose uh, an analog signal to open this up a privacy tone or PL tone or CTCSS tone whatever you want to call it uh, that is a hundred percent legal even the uh, frequency shift I mean the GMRS frequencies is pretty specific to a single uh, you know group of, of frequencies but there is a lot of debate whether you know if you could do that split the frequencies like that uh, and, and use this system I mean by definition of the FCC this is not a repeater they say it has to simultaneously transmit what you receive into the device to repeat it out simultaneously this thing waits it receives it records it then sends it back out uh, I seen a lot of forums and blogs and stuff that that go back and forth and you get the safety sallies out there fighting the uh, you know uh, the uh, the uh, gorilla guys you know and all that a lot of questions has been asked about this and, and nobody really has an answer only the FCC but I think my interpretation the FCC regards a simplex repeater as just another operator so so this could be a quasi person and it's somewhat legal because uh, for a radio to be operated on you have to have somewhat of control over it whether you be there or not this could be up on a hilltop and you could remote control the operations of this actually disable this unit here via remote control and that makes this legal for you to have this by itself up on a hilltop and you some distance away and, and be able to control this that that is the only requirement that they require the uh, simplex repeater thing and the offsets of frequencies and stuff like that I think I think now this is my own personal opinion is legal and I'm running with it uh, your interpretation may, may, may be different and I know I'm gonna get some some people here getting on my case for 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 doing this you know suck it and that's all that's all I can say for now uh, but uh, read the rules for yourself make your own interpretations and and do what you think you need to do uh, that is my disclaimer this is what I'm gonna do all right, enough said, and uh, the next video will be configuring the uh, simplex repeater box itself. Gorilla Geek going 10-10.